Hey guys, my name is Shai, and I am very happy to be back doing another Starseed reading, which I have not done in a while. It feels like it's been a while. That is actually part of the message here, but first, I don't know why, I feel very drawn to this handful of raw rainbow fluorite. It's like a breath of fresh air. I've had these guys sitting on my bookcase for <laughs> like a couple of years and I never really think about them. I think I bust them out every once in a while, but <sighs> just handling them. It's it's a breath of fresh air, an absolute breath of fresh air. Maybe because I've had them <laughs> kind of in this black bag. Maybe I'm going to leave them out now. I think they would like that. <sighs> That's the frequency <laughs> of right now, a breath of fresh air. Let's just put these guys, let them hang out. <laughs> okay, so I actually haven't really been thinking about starseed themes really much at all for the past little while. And um, that's a good thing, and that's part of a larger uh, pattern going on. <sighs> I think it's safe to assume most of you are watching this during 2022, 2023, 2024, and maybe into 2025, um, because in those periods, the North Node is in Taurus, and then it's going to be in Aries. And to me, this marks a span of time, like a few years here, about a three month, a three, three year long period, where there is a big focus on Taurus energy grounding down into the Earth, getting connected with Gaia and with our physical senses, right? And then Aries where it's the reignition of the human spirit and getting in touch with your I am presence and knowing and like refusing to put yourself in any kind of box. So in this entire three year period of 2022, 23, 24, possibly a little bit into 2025, it's like you're the most interesting thing in your universe, right? You're the most interesting thing in your universe. And it's all about you and your soul and connecting with the earth, right? And because of this, shift I've been finding that I haven't really been thinking so much about galactic things and I'm trying to figure out how to transition my sentence but I whatever I'm not writing an essay I'm just recording a reading so I can just jump into my next point I guess where it's that this video is going to resonate uh the most for starseeds who are evolving what it means for them to like identify as a star seed or what it or what your or how you re re resonate how you resonate with your star seed aspects i was gonna say something else but that's what came out i'm having a very very strange and entirely unique feeling in my fingers right now i have no idea where it's coming from um maybe maybe it was influenced from the rainbow fluoride my fingers feel like they're pushing through jello almost like they're made of jello <laughs> so weird and it's giving me shivers <sighs> shivers all over the place I feel a bit like a squid very interesting I don't know what to make of that <laughs> but so what do I mean about evolving what it means for you to be a starseed um, and how you resonate with your starseed aspects it feels to me like this video is going to resonate mostly with people who have really come a long way in kind of healing their start like the damage that you took on when you came to earth as a star seed right so most of us kind of begin or live most of our lives um feeling really alienated feeling not safe on the earth plane um feeling like an outsider feeling like an outcast and there's also this other kind of trend of having a save the world complex I, if i were to just describe that very quickly a save the world complex because we did we we remember some of us remember very specifically that we came here to help some of us just have that feeling of i know i'm here to be of service i know i'm here to help um humanity and the earth right uh but i think um our experience of being a human has kind of uh distorted that distorted the feeling of um, I am on earth in order to help consciousness. It's kind of kind of uh, distorted into I need to work to save the planet. But, you know, from Gaia's perspective, from the perspective of the higher consciousness of the human collective, from the perspective of source, from all of these higher perspectives, you know, the earth doesn't need saving and there's nothing has gone wrong. And 
we're not really here to do anything to save anybody because nobody needs saving because everyone is walking their perfect path and everything is already aligned and any healing that we do is simply our our linear perspective of walking through the process it's nothing actually needs to be done nothing has gone wrong right um so this video is essentially for, for star seeds and it's going to resonate for star seeds who are either um, already there, already feeling this, already kind of vibing with what I have just described, or if you still feel drawn into this video and you feel like you're not quite there yet, don't worry. That means that you're aligning with that and I can feel your alignment like about to click into place, right? You're coming into this great period of healing and when it, when a it means that you've been working on healing your lower chakras a lot, like for really your entire life, <laughs> because star seeds have particularly damaged lower chakras. And but once the healing process has been done on those lower chakras, then it's like, oh yeah, I am safe on the earth, right? And I and I feel at home on the earth, and I no longer feel homesick for the stars. And I, it is good and right and proper for me to be here. And I know that all I need to do to save the world, quote unquote, is to just be me and to just live my life with peace and joy and that I don't actually have to do anything because nothing has gone wrong. Um, so that's kind of, that's the setup here. <laughs> and I got three Oracle decks. One of them is actually this Lover's Oracle, which I bought because Valentine's Day, you know, I'm recording this the day after Valentine's Day. Um, and I kept thinking that I would do like a pick a heart reading or do some kind of relationship reading. And you know, it just hasn't felt like the thing to do, but I feel this deck coming out for this reading. So I'm just gonna see what we get. And this is also brand new, Sacred Destiny. I'm really loving these cards as well. It is your birthright. It is your birthright to be able to walk out into the world and feel completely and utterly held by Mother Gaia, knowing that no matter what you do, no matter where you go, no matter what is happening to you, that you are entirely held and you are perfectly safe in every moment, no matter what you perceive to be happening around you, perfectly held, perfectly safe. And that is how you are meant to feel in every moment of your lives on earth. <sighs> Transformation with the butterfly. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> exactly right leaving behind so i've had a few experiences lately of drawing the death card and then really having a massive purge like a purge in the best kind of way where i really release subconscious fears and, and subconscious beliefs that were holding me back so to have this card come out you've either recently done a lot of that or it's happening for you right now <laughs> where um you're really understanding that it's it's a little bit like the lights coming on and having a sudden epiphany and going, wow, I was really holding an idea that was keeping me down, keeping me in victim mentality, or even keeping the earth in in a victim mentality. This is kind of making me think of, um, how do I describe it? Okay, so for most of my life, you know, I would look at the news and I would see all of the horrible, like, uh, things that were happening that, are, you know, are still happening to the environment, right, to the planet itself. And I would be so distraught. Like, I used to cry, like, cry. I remember being in college and I would just read about, you know, different environmental disasters and stuff. And I would just cry and cry and cry and just feel all this despair. <laughs> like, how could people do this to the earth? And, and stuff like that and I would feel so it you know feel so much anger and I don't want to go too much into it I guess because you guys get it right you you know what I mean um and so that went on for a long time and eventually uh when I started connecting with Gaia more what I was always getting from her the message I was always 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 getting from her is that she is not the victim of humanity right she is not the victim of humanity and any narratives that 
we tell ourselves, any stories we tell each other about how Gaia has been victimized by humanity are there, even though there is some truth in that, in that humans do things to the planet that have damaging effects, it's not exactly what it seems, right? It's not exactly what it seems from the human perspective because you have to include Gaia's perspective on this and her perspective is not that, not one of a helpless victim, right? Gaia is a, is a planetary consciousness. She is our earth mother. She is the mother to everything on the planet. And she is completely empowered to do, to allow or to stop anything happening on like in her biosphere, right? She is in charge here. She is in charge here. And anything that we do, she is allowing us to do. And anything that we do, she could stop. Um, and she, she is not the victim here, right? It, it's, and our, our feelings are her feelings. Our feelings are her feelings. But at the same time, um, what do I mean? Okay, I need to make it, I need to be careful about the distinction I'm making here. Our feelings are her feelings, but we don't need to hold our negative feelings, the ones that we think are negative, we don't need to hold our negative feelings apart from her. There, I used to feel like, oh, if, if I'm full of, if I'm having a bad day, right, if I'm running a lot of negativity through me, if I'm really in distress and despair, I used to feel like that I should avoid grounding, right, that I should avoid grounding with the earth because I didn't want to send all of my bad feelings, all my bad juju, all of my bad vibes, I didn't want to send them down into the earth because I felt like I was polluting the earth, right, and I felt like I should, like, just keep it to myself, <laughs> right, um, but it's like our feelings are her feelings, and if we're holding all of this bad energy inside of our ourselves it's that's not actually doing Gaia or the earth any favors right and the thing is from her perspective there aren't actually any bad vibes there is no bad energy there is only energy and when we when we're having a bad day and we're experiencing unpleasant emotions those are simply just they're just vibrations right a vibration can't actually be bad we can experience it as unpleasant in our human bodies um and so the best thing to actually do with a vibration that we can't handle right if we're having a bad day if we're overwhelmed if we're just not vibing high right that's because there's like this vibration inside of us that we are on that we're that we in our human bodies are not quite able to to like process effectively, right? We're, we're like hold, holding it in and it's like vibrating around and rattling us. Like imagine if you put all these rocks like in a tin can and rattled them around, right? And then it's like loud and irritating. You send that energy down into the earth and Gaia doesn't experience it as like pollution. She does not experience it as a, as a negative emotion or bad energy. It's just intense energy. And guess what? She is a planet. She can handle it. It is no problem. I'm getting like shivers when I'm saying this. It is no problem for her to absorb the bad emotions of the bad days of all the humans on the planet. She just, it's just energy that feeds down into the earth and then it's just recycled, right? It, it, it like goes down into the magnetic sphere of the earth and it's just it's just part of the the energetic cycle of the entire biosphere of the planet so um yeah you know anybody worrying about that we we're not polluting the planet we are not polluting the planet with our with our emotions right we're not polluting the planet with our emotions and i'm really being reminded um so yeah of course on a physical level we are humans do create pollution right but even the pollution that we are that humans are doing it is not like beyond Gaia's um, like capability to deal with it. I have just been hearing lately of some kind of new and like um, little microbe, some kind of microbe that has just recently been discovered and it eats plastic. <laughs> and uh, so of course there's lots of concerns with that because you know what if this microbe that eats plastic suddenly gets everywhere and, and eats all of our plastic and then everything we have that keeps our society together <laughs> will be dissolved right so I mean you know you can have concerns about that but uh, the first time I heard about that the very first thing in my head was wouldn't that be like that just shows the power of Gaia right if, if she's like okay I've had enough of all your guys's plastic toys I'm gonna just go and create a little little um tiny little organism that's just going to go off and dissolve all of the plastic and solve the problem. <laughs> so, you know, pol pollution, Gaia can handle it. She can handle it. And if she's allowed us to make a big mess, it's because she has allowed us to make a big mess. And so th that's what I'm kind of getting at with, with this transformation card, right? All of these um, worries um, that we have, when we look at them from a different perspective, when we look at our worries and concerns, specifically about the planet, right, we can really start to understand that 
our worries were coming from a kind of distorted place, from a place of victim mentality and from a place of actually seeing Gaia as less than she is, right? Less than she is. When you really get connected with Gaia and you communicate with her yourself and you feel how much vitality and peace and power just constantly vibrates through her entire being, it is just... <laughs> it is so empowering because it just reminds you that, you know, she's in charge here and she has this under control <laughs> and really having the experience of feeling just how powerful and like on the job she is really starts to erode and erase all of those worries that we have about what might be happening to the planet or what people might be doing to the planet or and also and therefore also how safe you feel on the planet, right? You can feel safe on the planet because Mother Gaia's got you, right? Mother Gaia has got you. You are so safe, right? So this transformation card letting you know that those subconscious fears and distorted programming that were kind of running around in your subconscious are dropping away, dropping away, and it is all thanks to the earth herself, right? Okay, these heart cards are almost impossible to shuffle, so I'm gonna give it a go. I like any because they're still pretty stiff, so I need to try to shuffle them that way <laughs> a little bit to get them from stop them from sticking, you know. Yeah, it's like all about Gaia right now <laughs> for star seeds. I mean, for everybody, for everybody, but for star seeds in particular, because I th I know me personally, I have had memories of other planets, and I have often compared Gaia's life system to the life system of other planets, and I have often looked at. Gaia's life system as being rather like violent and brutal, <laughs> right? And um, I'm dropping out of that as well, dropping out of that as well, because, wow, there, there's so much to say, so much to say on that. I'm not even drawing any cards. Um, so I'm just going to, I'm going to keep trying to get this out. So on some other planets, there is less um, like predator prey activity, for example, right? We can look at, you know, apex predators and their prey and we can see um you know it's violent and it's bloody and it's gory right you ever watch a docu like a lion documentary right it's violent and bloody and gory and that in and of itself can be traumatic to star seeds who have um especially if you have prominent memories or if you've only ever lived on planets that are much 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 like more harmonious um and this is directly tied in with the fact that Gaia's energy, it, it, it is so, it's a rainbow, right? It's a rainbow. Gaia's energy represents the entire spectrum of the rainbow. It, the red ray is here, right? The orange ray is here. The yellow ray is here, right? <laughs> and that plays out in the ecosystem, in the predator and prey dynamics, right? And we see that also, um, how do, how do I even put this? It's that's also why there are negative and what we what we call negative entities, right? Um, on the planet is because they're actually part of Gaia's ecosystem, part of her <sighs> consciousness ecosystem, and it's because everything is supposed to be here. Everything is here. Earth is where the rainbow is, right? Other planets can be like violet blue and green ray and not really have the yellow orange and red ray of consciousness at all right so if, if you from a like a planet where your root chakra instead of being red where your root chakra was violet right then, then you have no um frame of reference to understand why the yellow and orange and red ray like why it is valuable or why it is here right but that's what your time on earth has been all about understanding and coming into um balance and harmony and union and to appreciate the beauty like the phrase that just came to mind was to appreciate the beauty of the crocodile right appreciate the beauty of the crocodile um how beautiful are crocodiles right so amazing they are astounding creatures they're one of Gaia's like most magnificent 
creatures because they are so ancient, right? They're 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 one of the most ancient animals still kicking, right? They have outlived everything. And crocodiles amaze me because they like don't get sick. They don't get cancer. They can't get colds or flus or anything. They <laughs> they can live I think at least 200 years, but I think they can also just kind of keep living and just get bigger and bigger and bigger, right? Um, and there's actually, it's like they, they can't be polluted. They can live in almost any kind of water. And I think there are even radioactive crocodiles. It's like you can irradiate a crocodile and it doesn't get cancer because they don't get cancer. <laughs> and so they just, they're just these magnificent beings that just can't be stopped. And they, they're just, they fascinate me. I love crocodiles, but of course, you don't want to go swimming with the crocodiles, right? You, res you, you see the beauty in the crocodile. You see the magnificence of the crocodile. You do not get in the water and go swimming with the crocodiles, right? You respect the crocodile space and you go, hey, crocodile, you keep to your like swamp and I'm going to stay up here on the hill, right? <laughs> you don't go swimming with the crocodiles. So I don't think I, I don't, I don't feel like this reading is supposed to really go into, you know, negative entities and stuff on the planet, but I just want to highlight that they are here and they are reflections of the red ray and just like, just like a crocodile, right? Just like a crocodile. Would not the earth be poorer if we had no crocodiles, right? Would not the earth be poorer if we had no crocodiles? Would you want to see crocodiles go extinct? No, you just want to be able to stay out of the water with them, right? Okay. On, on some other planets, there were no crocodiles of any variety. There were no literal crocodiles and there were no figurative crocodiles. So on earth, you come here to understand why crocodiles deserve to be here and why they have an important place thing to play in the ecosystem right crocodiles are important for their own ecosystems we you know what happens when an apex predator um is like removed everyone's probably heard the story of yellowstone national park in the u.s right where you know i think wolves were extinct in the u.s if i remember correctly and um in yellowstone since there were no wolves the deer population got out of control and they started it, which started eroding the banks and the vegetation um, was being like overeaten and, it, and everything was going, the whole ecosystem was thrown out of whack and they had to um, get wolves from Canada because the wolf population in Canada is still thriving. And so they, you know, imported some wolves and reintroduced them to Yellowstone. And then the entire ecosystem of the Yellowstone National Park was brought back into balance. It's a pretty famous story. And it's the same thing with, um, I think I'll just call it red ray consciousness, right? Red ray consciousness uh, needs to be here as an important, <laughs> I'm seeing like a wooden spoon in a cauldron. Like it, it's something that needs to stir the pot, right? It's something needs to stir the pot. Otherwise everything would what happens if you don't stir your soup, right? Everything will eventually sink to the bottom and burn. So red ray consciousness, which includes some of the entities that you might consider negative, um, but red ray, red ray consciousness is here on the planet, is part of the beauty of earth and is part of the rainbow, right? What would a rainbow be without the red ray? Okay, I'm gonna close my eyes while I try to shuffle this <laughs> and get one of these. I think the last video I posted was just like a six minute blurb of me describing how I came into a higher level of a higher like experience of holding unconditional love for beings that I wanted to get away from. And the question that I asked was, what does source feel about that person? How does source feel about that person? And of course there's only one answer, right? Source unconditionally loves that person <laughs> and source doesn't actually see any difference between me and that person. <sighs> Yes. <laughs> so that that's the the kind of founding vibe here, right? Realizing that from Gaia's perspective and from the source perspective, there is only unconditional love for all, for all. And by the time, whenever you are seeing this video, that is what you are coming into, right? You could be at a different spot. I'm just going to have to cut the deck on this one I think okay that's the one you can all be at a different spot 
with how you are experiencing different levels of unconditional love, but around the time you see this video, you're expanding your ability to feel more in condition, more unconditional love for more variety of energies, basically. Angel wings, this beautiful couple on the inside. Forgiveness. <laughs> Stop focusing your energy on past events, for life is too precious to waste. You create your reality by what you think, dream, and imagine. Yes, exactly. <laughs> what was I just talking about? Forgiveness, right? Forgiveness. I don't, I mean, you could have something specific in your life that, you, that you're working on forgiving, either forgiving yourself or forgiving somebody else, but this is you know, what was I just talking about? And I, I didn't see what it looked like, um, but because I had my eyes closed, but I, I mean, I drew the deck and grabbed that, or I cut the deck and grabbed that card blind. And I just got this deck. I didn't even know what was on the back of it. So it's, it's just, it's so perfect. Um, this is more like for, like, I almost want to call it macro forgiveness, macro forgiveness, forgiveness on like forgiving the whole thing, forgiving the entire system, like forgiving the entire game. And getting that complete bird's eye, source level, soul level view of the entire thing and understanding even that there's not even anything to forgive. That forgiveness itself is almost like a duality, polarity-based thing because you that even forgiveness is like you did something wrong and therefore I'm going to forgive you. But it's like, no, there's none of that. There, nothing has ever gone wrong. You, nobody did anything to anybody. We are all one consciousness. We all came here consenting to have these experiences. And this is all part of a greater picture. And all of the beings and states of awareness who have who are able to maintain that broad perspective, like Gaia herself, like the sun, like source. And I'm really thinking also of the Sirius star system right now is like coming through very strongly. Wow. Okay. Um, not sure why that is. But <laughs> oh, because there, there is a stargate, there's a portal in the Sirius star system that goes directly to source. So I didn't know until just this very moment that Sirius, the Sirius star system, the triple star system is beaming this type of unconditional love, Sirius is apparently a anchor point for the source perspective in our little corner of the galaxy. Interesting. So, yes, this type of macro level forgiveness, which again allows you to feel safe on Earth, to feel safe on Earth. Um, and another message kind of related to this is you should always feel safe on earth because everyone chooses when they exit their bodies, right? Everyone chooses when they exit their bodies. This is uh, something I have really learned on a personal level over the last year. I won't get into my personal stories, but um, suffice to say that I have very personally learned that when a human or an animal leaves their body, it is because they chose to do so. And we need to respect their decision that it was their time to go. And it doesn't matter about the manner of their death, right? Um, I know like some types of deaths, like some, some, some types of phys physical deaths are harder to process, harder to understand, harder to deal with than others, depending on how like how how the the being left their body but none of that actually matters it, it it is just the mechanism the manner of the physical death is only the mechanism and a a being can simply choose to manifest the quickest simplest way out um, and it, in order to synchronize with their timing right all things in perfect timing into including the transition out of the body you know, it, it, death is just like birth, right? It's just in reverse, but you're being reborn back into non-physical. So I think most of us would agree that we choose the exact moment of our births. We choose our parents. We choose, you know, our birth charts, right? Our astrological birth charts. We, we choose the manner of when and where we're born. It's this exact same thing with our deaths. So you never, never need to have fear about dying or when you're going to die or when someone else is going to die because everyone is choosing to leave their bodies exactly when they are choosing to leave their bodies and there's a level of respect 
that we are invited to have about when someone chooses to leave their body. It's again, kind of like what I was saying at the beginning of the video about how to, like when we really understand and feel and experience and respect Mother Gaia for the magnificent, powerful being and sovereign being that she is, then all of our worries about what might be happening on the planet, they really start to dissolve because we realize, wow, you know, Gaia is not a victim. Gaia is sovereign, right? Gaia is so sovereign. And she decides what goes on here, right? She decides, she decides what to allow and what to not allow. And, and that, res that respect that we have for Gaia soothes and softens and brings us into this level of ease and feelings of safety that we couldn't otherwise have, right? Um, same thing with respecting the death process, the, the process of leaving, leaving your body and having respect for other beings for whenever they choose to leave their bodies. And same thing for you, right? It, it, you might not consciously understand when you're going to choose to leave your body, but that is all happening <laughs> for the like the 99.999 percent of you right the, the part of you that is not your conscious mind the entirety of you that is everything other than your conscious mind and your conscious mind is only the tiniest little itty and bittiest little part of you the vast majority of you decides exactly when it is the perfect time for you to leave their body your body so you never need to worry about getting in a car accident or, or having a disease or anything like that because you're going to go exactly when you choose to go and that's it, right? And so once you respect the process, can you feel the level of ease and ah, and safety and security and feeling of, ah, everything is well here, everything is well here, everything is exactly as it should be. That brings this feelings of safety and security and just like, yes, right? So respect, respect goes so far into allowing star seeds to feel safe on earth, right? Because we had this level of respect on other planets and in higher realms and in other experiences of consciousness, right? But for whatever reason, our, our lives on earth, we actually lost respect. We lost respect. We lost respect for the earth. We lost respect for our sovereignty we lost respect for ourselves we almost lost res we actually lost respect for like the universal system like we we lost respect for ourselves as creator beings we lost respect for creative consciousness itself and that's what's we're but that's done now right now, now we are regaining respect for the entire universe <laughs> for Gaia, for our souls, for ourselves, for consciousness, for all rays of consciousness, for everything, and respect for crocodiles too. <laughs> and yeah, so looking down at this <laughs> card here, I hadn't even read it yet, health, energy transformation. And I'll give you a moment to look at this light language if you like. I find them very activating. All right, that card is all about reclaiming your ability to choose how much energy you have, <laughs> right? Um, man, I can relate. I can relate so hard to that because most of my life I have been, I have struggled with various different types of like exhaustion and fatigue and just being tired and, you know, depression and all of it. And I always felt like my energy was outside of my control. And I actually have always felt that other people had a source of energy that I didn't have. I don't know why I thought that. I, I just felt like I just never had any energy. And I would actually always, I would reinforce it by telling myself these narratives of I have no energy, I have no energy. And so what was I doing? I was perpetuating a state where I had no energy. So this card remi like reminds you that you choose how much energy you have. And this is energy to go exercise, to go walk the dog, to get out of bed, to, to pay the bills. But this is also like creative energy, right? Creative energy, your creative process. And it's, it's <laughs> this is so, so the result of healing your lower chakras, right? Because you need that um, healthily vibrating root chakra in order to be like stable enough to thrive like you're daily thriving like literally just having the energy to to live and to move around and to do your daily things right and the energy to feel safe you actually have the energy to feel safe because sometimes uh, especially if you have been in if you if in your life if you've had um if your mind has gotten very practiced at falling into 
unpleasant realms of thought. <laughs> Let me put it that way, right? If you have been practicing, and this was me, this was me for 30 years, this was so me, for 30 years I practiced all of those unpleasant thoughts that we don't want to go there. Right? I was practicing them. I got really good at them. I was an expert. Let me, I was an expert at unpleasant thoughts. Okay. Um, and I got so practiced at them that I almost couldn't stop them. Right. But this is like rewrite the narrative, right? Rewrite the narrative, transform your energy. You are the one calling the shots here about how much energy you have. You are the one calling the shots here about what thoughts you think and about how you feel and how you vibe. You can transform all of this. I think I want to read you the thing from the book on this. Okay, some of these. I remember when I first got this deck, I found this card was actually very influential in helping me shift my energy. Okay, another element of our natural state is energy. Energy is flowing in you all the time and you can transform it to achieve abundance in anything. Having a sufficient energy level is important because it will enable your body to operate at what we call a high vibration. The term vibration will be expanded upon a little bit later in the book with some of the codes. For now, just understand that this will make your body act like a magnet to attract all the abundance you desire. Energy comes from within you. The limiter to this code is a belief that you need something external to generate energy. The affirmation is, I am full of energy and I choose how much energy I have. This is again reminding you <laughs> that it's all within, right? It is all within. And anytime you feel like you need something outside of you, that is a clue. That is a red flag. That's just a moment. And it's not, not to beat yourself up about it, but whenever you find yourself thinking, I need this thing, I need this thing for, for whatever reason. I need this thing to have more energy. I need this thing to feel, to be able to relax. I need this thing to feel better. Or if you find yourself saying something like, I need those people to do something differently so I can feel better, whatever it is. Whenever you're looking outside yourself in order to make yourself feel better, that's just the clue. That's just the moment you catch yourself and you go back within and all the energy that you need is within you. And because it's like, Respect the earth, respect crocodiles, respect the universal system and respect yourself, right? Respect yourself and respect that you have the the power and the energy to do whatever it is that you need to do, right? <laughs> do whatever it is that you need to do. Okay, I want some tarot cards here. I've never done so long of a reading with so few cards, but damn, apparently some of those messages wanted to come out. <laughs> wow, I am like just coming back to myself now. I don't even, I don't even know. That was intense. three of pentacles. And I love that these wasps came out, right? Here's a wasp's nest because <laughs> any of you who have ever lived in the suburbs, you, you know how much like, I don't know, did you ever see your dad do battle with a wasp's nest, right? It's like I grew up thinking that wasps are bad, right? Wasps are bad. And when you see some wasps building a nest, you're supposed to go in there and eradicate them, right? I, I had a, my dad found some wasps building some nests in his shed. And so, of course, it, it was all, it was on, right? We were now fighting the wasps because you can't let wasps in your shed. You have to destroy them. <laughs> and it kind of, that whole thing goes with, um, you know, what I was saying about the red ray and crocodiles. It's like even like wasps also should be allowed to be here, right? Wasps should be allowed to be here. And the three of pentacles is that card of cooperation, of co-creation, of teamwork. So the wasps here are represented as just like bees, right? I mean, bees build a much more sophisticated uh, hive, but wasps still work together to build their, ne their nest in a similar fashion. <laughs> so it's like we can cooperate and build something with people even when we feel like they're wasps, right? <laughs> even when we feel like they're wasps. And you know what? This is reminding me that I have been, I don't think I want to talk too much about it. I just want to say in terms of the Draco, right? Because everyone watching this is a star seed, so everyone knows about the Draco. And 
I have been kind of learning a bit more about their energy lately and kind of why they are the way they are. And what I have been noticing is one of their strengths, like one of their strengths, like all things aside, the strengths of the Draco is actually this kind of three of pentacles teamwork. They have a way of getting a very, um, in some cases, extremely large numbers of people working together in a way that other types of beings often can't pull off. And what's interesting is that they pull that off in very, very, very low frequency states of consciousness. So I think that's actually one of the ways that they have served us by actually um, being able to bring down into like, you know, when the earth was vibrating so low, so dark in some of the lowest, darkest days of earth's history, right? It was actually Draco consciousness or what we could also call red ray. I could equate it with what red, red ray consciousness, all those types of, um, slower vibrating states of consciousness. They actually were important because they were the ones who were able to thrive, survive and create in the most challenging energetic times on earth. So we actually can thank those, those beings, right? Those beings and any, and humans holding their frequency. I have been um, realizing some of the people that I, I know who basically hold Draco vibrations in, inside of them. And I still am not entirely clear <laughs> on their big picture function um, because I tend to think of them sometimes as wasps but <laughs> uh, I understand now that I will come into a deeper level of understanding about why they are the way they are and why the way they are is important and uh, and worthy right it's like I don't fully understand it maybe I never will in this life but you know I think I will later maybe it's going to take more more years right but as years and years go by we're going to understand why the wasps and the crocodiles are here, right? What is this? Oh, two of wands. Getting that bird's eye perspective with this hawk. The bird's eye perspective with the hawk. I almost, I think this is just, that's just kind of confirming what we were already talking about. I don't know if I want to add anything more. Let me get the next card and see. This hawk is actually looking directly at these wasps, getting that bird's eye perspective on the wasps. <laughs> the star in reverse. And wow, that's, uh, you know, you guys know me, I don't typically read reversals. So if a card manages to get itself reversed, that is some doing. So here, here we are again with a different type of bird. I don't recognize the bird. Let me check that out. Okay, so this is a morning dove, morning dove, morning M-O-U, <laughs> the morning dove. And the fact that this star came out reversed um, sums up exactly what I was feeling. This is about the star seeds coming down to earth, right? The star seeds turning inwards, um, turning within and understanding to no longer be longing for the stars and, and understanding that the stars are inside of you, right? The stars are inside of you. Everything is always with you. Coming down to earth, becoming fully human, but knowing that to become fully human does not entail giving up any other part of yourself. You become fully human in addition to everything else that you already are, right? It's this internalizing of the star energy. It is all within you and you are coming down to earth feeling fully secure, fully safe, fully held, fully fully protected on the earth while also feeling fully human, no longer holding yourself apart from humanity. You know, some of you had heard me say before that before I had my star seed awakening, when I was an atheist and I didn't even believe in aliens, like I was like, I didn't believe in anything that I couldn't see, okay? <laughs> and yet, and yet I was so alienated that I was, I would actually scream, scream at the top of my lungs, sometimes at people, I'm an alien. I would scream that I am an alien. And I would, I would just get triggered sometimes. And cause people would be like, you know, why are you like that? And I'd be like, I'm an alien. And I would just be screaming this out. <laughs> sometimes I would just scream it out into the void. And isn't that like, I, I laugh so hard at myself looking back now. Cause it was like, what an amazing example of your subconscious 
talking for you and talking to you and I was literally screaming I am an alien and I like wasn't listening to myself like <laughs> you know it's just it, it blows my mind how like disconnected I was from my own inner guidance I was literally screaming that I was an alien and I, I couldn't believe it right <laughs> I didn't even understand that I was what I was at, what I was even saying. <laughs> uh, anyway, this is also to me about bringing your higher perspective down to earth, right? Grounding the higher perspective, grounding the higher perspective, and grounding the starlight, grounding the starlight, knowing that there is no difference between being here or being somewhere else, because the greater part of you is wherever you want to be. So you are everywhere. You are everything. You are everything, everywhere, all of the time. Everything is everywhere, all of the time. I wish I could show you the image in my head. It, it's just a universe-sized network of stars, right? But all of the stars are you. All of the stars are different aspects of yourself. It's like, you know, look up at the night sky and you see all of the stars, especially if you can get out to a dark sky point and see all of the stars. Imagine if you could look out at the universe and see all of the stars, but then really fully internalize and really fully realize that every single one of those stars is just one aspect of your own soul and that it is all connected in a network, right? The space between the stars is just the space that it takes for the messages to be sent, like synapses, right? The synapses in your brain, there's actually like a little space, right? A little space, the, the synapses in your brain, they get really close, they get really close, and then they send messages to each other, but there has to be a gap, right? There, there's, it's not just like, they don't just grow together, they have to be apart. I don't actually know why that is. I'm going to look that up. Why do synapses have a space between them, right? The same thing with stars. There's a space between them, and that's just the space where the messages are sent, where the energy is sent. That is the... Something, something, an analogy of a loom. <laughs> like, have you ever done, like, any type of embroidery or cross-stitch or needlework or anything? Like, you know, you, you put the needle through, and it's like you don't just... There has to be space between every point where you put the needle, right? You thread the needle, you put the needle through, you put the needle through, you put the needle through, and there needs to be space in order to give the thread a place to be. Without the space, you cannot you cannot create a picture with your thread. I think the last thing I want to do is just read you this message in the book about the star card in this particular deck. This is the Pacific Northwest Tarot. Hope, optimism, positivity, renewal, serenity, calm, healing, and peace. Dove was most at home in the sky. He had taken flight at dawn. From darkness, filled with trepidation and fear, he flew toward a bright beacon above the horizon. Dove wings kept him aloft into the daylight through forest, valley, and wasteland, heading ever toward that morning star still shining in the distance. As Dove journeyed, his heart lightened. He felt echoes of past pilgrims. His path intertwined with those of other travelers. He left his fear behind. He wheeled joyously in the sky and skimmed above the clouds, flying higher than he had ever, than he had any right to. He tested the boundaries of himself and of the world he inhabited. A part of him hoped that he never reached that star, not wanting the journey to end. The rest of him wondered what would happen when he got there. I'm going to leave you guys there. Talk to you later. Bye.